you have to crawl pretty much on your belly off the roof of St. Peter's. I know because I took the shot. Uh, it is, as Pacho Pontelli wanted it, the very same proportions, dimensions, measurements as the Holy Temple. Uh, after it was 30 years standing, it's very soft soil. And the Vatican is built on an Etruscan graveyard slope. The, the soil is very moist, it's spongy, and putting big, heavy buildings with a lot of marble inside, they settle. 30 years after it's built, uh, the wall starts buckling out, it almost collapses. They have to do an emergency and put in this buttress and shore up this wall. It was buckling out several feet like this and almost collapsed. Uh, they had a um, sentry area up here, and that's closed. The soldiers can no longer be up there. They were afraid of the extra weight on top of the Sistine Chapel. And the ceiling was in collapse. They had stuck in bricks and plaster. It was a mess. The original ceiling was junior apprentice work, just smearing some blue paint up there, putting up some gold stars, and calling it uh, the gate of heaven from Jacob's dream in the book of Genesis. That was done on every church ceiling and synagogue ceilings alike. And you, it was really child's work. It was dumb work. It was just plain old labor. You go up there, smear the blue, put up stars, and you're done. Usually it would be kids doing it because it was a little tiny space on the top of the scaffolding and you needed bodies that could bend like rubber to paint up there. Um, well, uh, getting back to the Sistine, inside the flooring is done by anonymous Florentine pavement experts doing this style which is Cosma Tesco. Um, remember I told you they wanted to know all the ancient mystical wisdom. The only people they could turn to were the Jews. So the key to all ancient mystical wisdom, Babylonian, Jewish, Greek, Jewish, was something called the Seal of Solomon. Today we call it the Star of David. Uh, but back then, up until around the 1600s, this was not the symbol of the Jewish people. It was the symbol of Jewish mysticism, the Kabbalah. And if you meditated long enough on this, the ancient mysteries would open up and reveal themselves to you. Uh, this is a very rare photo. This is uh, the floor of the Sistine Chapel. You're not allowed to take photos of the Sistine unless they let you in alone at night and say, go ahead. So I, I was very, very lucky. I specifically took this section. This is where the stufetta is placed, the little camper stove during the conclave. You know, the folks are elected inside the Sistine Chapel. I'd be too distracted to be voting. I'd be looking at everything. It's a great time in there, but um, they vote and elect the Pope in the conclave inside the Sistine. The stufetta is put right here. You can see scorch marks when some embers have fallen out over the century. Uh, so symbolically, the choice of the new Pope is based on the ancient mystical wisdom. This is another section of the floor. Uh, uh, the floor has a double meaning. This is 30 years before Michelangelo. I call it DM, before Michelangelo. And uh, the floor shows the choreography of a papal mass, where the Pope stops, where the choir sings a, a hymn, where the Pope kneels, where they swing the censer for the incense, where the holy water is sprinkled. You can see the entire layout of the mass. The floor is choreographed again. At the same time, there's a second layer of meaning. The entire floor is a Kabbalistic meditational device. I can take it any rabbi, any Kabbalistic uh, expert, they look at the floor and they go, oh my gosh, look at this, 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 this. This is like the drawings we have from the Kabbalistic masters of the 1400s in Italy. That's what they're doing here. Uh, the, the one part of the Kabbalah is based on ten spheres. In fact, the Italian word sfera comes directly from the Hebrew of the Kabbalah, sefira. Sefira became sfera. And uh, there are ten of them, concentric. And the Pope kneels to this very day on this little tiny porphyry dot. Uh, in the book you'll see that we describe what Michelangelo does with that dot. It's out of control. When I bring VIPs there and they see the uh, tricks that he's doing with optics when you stand on the Pope's dot. 
it's out of control. Uh, but the Pope kneels there. There's another secret in this photo. You can see that I'm not a professional photographer because that's my backpack that I left in the <laughs> <laughs> This is the, one of the first clues that Michelangelo left behind. Uh, this is 1492, and it's another important year, and he's about 17 years old when he makes this out of wood. Now, uh, this is light years ahead of any other crucifix made at that time. It's completely anatomically correct. That's against the law. Back then, you were not supposed to learn anatomy. Now, the ancient Greek and Roman sculptures, Lysippus, all of that, that gang, Praxilites, they could dissect corpses. Of